Good morning. Well, welcome to Park Avenue. It's so good to see you. Uh, and, and maybe some of you are back for the first time today. Uh, great looking crew over here. Our compromands uh, will be a, a special part of this service today. There are a total of 17 that will be confirmed today, some in this service and some in the other service. So it's a very special day and glad that you are a part of it and that you're joining us as well online. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. It's a very special day in the life of the church and it begins Holy Week. And I just remind you that we'll have services in here every day at noontime, about a 30 minute, maybe 40 minute service. We're gonna be praying with Jesus this week. What do you, I mean that week, what do you think Jesus would have been praying on that particular day of Holy Week when he was here uh, with us on earth? And then on Thursday night, so that's Monday through Friday at 12 o'clock noon, and then on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock, we'll have our regular Monday Thursday service, which is one of the most holy, moving services that we do every year. Hope you'll be here for that as well. Uh, on Good Friday, we will serve the first uh, responders and COVID workers. We're going to serve them a meal, and it's going to be a, a beautiful way to give back a little bit of a special thank you to them. Easter services. Can you believe Easter's almost here? Three services we'll have this year. We're going to have an 8.30 traditional service. We'll have a 10, I'm sorry, 9.45 traditional service, and then our 11 o'clock contemporary service. Uh, so I, I hope that you'll be part of worship services with us, either online or here in person. But then the next Sunday, April the 11th, we got even more stuff happening. On April the 11th, we have a very special day. We're going to uh, baptize some folks who want to be baptized. Um, one of the, the, some of the children wanted to be immersed. They wanted to be dunked, to use that language, right? And so we're, we're making arrangements to be able to do that, to, to borrow a, a baptismal pool that we can do that as well. So that's on April the 11th. If you haven't been baptized, your children haven't been baptized, or you're interested in being baptized, or remembering your baptism, that's the day to do it. It's going to be a special day, April the 11th. Immediately following this service this morning, I will share sort of an update on the state of the United Methodist Church right here in the sanctuary for those of you uh, who can uh, attend that. Uh, I, would you remember also, please, to fill out your communication card. Uh, those of you who can do it online, let us know how we can pray for you. Drop that in the offering plates on your way out as you leave the service today. I want to pray for us. I'm going to invite you to stand and just greet those around you, and we'll continue to worship together. Father, thank you so much for this day. We've been anticipating it, but not nearly as much as you have, because these are your children that are gathered here in this place, and you drew us here because you have something for us. But we have something for you too, Lord. It's our love and our worship. Receive it as we worship together in Jesus' name. Amen. Now stand and greet those around you if you would.
Beautiful way to start our worship in Christ alone. Would, would you stand and join me in the spoken call to worship from Psalm 78? My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonder he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even, even the, the children, children yet, yet to be, be born. born. And they in turn would tell their children then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. Isn't that a wonderful thing to hear this morning, that it is our responsibility and we're accountable to pass on God's teachings from generation to generation and how appropriate that we have our confirmands here with us this morning. We're going to sing an old hymn. we got a new twist to it. We're starting with two verses of, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. My great Redeemer's praise. We don't quite have a thousand tongues, but we need to sound like we're a thousand tongues. But we found some new verses, verses 3 and 4, which talk about teaching. Hopefully you're going to figure out that Jimmy's promise this morning is on teaching. So pay attention to those last two verses uh, that do talk about uh, teaching and that Jesus is our teacher. We are going to do a little interlude after verse 3, so heads up on that. Let's lift our voices as we sing, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Morning. I'm so honored uh, to be able to present the Compromands this morning. I have to say this is a really special group. We just got to spend the whole weekend with most of them and I'm telling you I think I can speak for Doug too when I say this really is a special group. So, uh, Brothers and sisters in Christ, through confirmation we renew the covenant declared at our baptism 
acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present Elizabeth Tift Bowers for confirmation. Go ahead and head on up. Carolyn Elise Greiner for confirmation. I present Kara Michelle Hilberg for confirmation. I present Jane Campbell Hinton for confirmation. I present Cadence Lee Jackson for confirmation. I present Samuel Grady McGinn for confirmation. I present Marky Edmund Perry III for confirmation. I present John Robinson Shinton for confirmation. I present Sarah Catherine Stiefel for confirmation. And I present Holden Wynn Walton for confirmation. All right, if, you, if you'll turn and look at me, confirmands, if you would, they have these, I have these questions to ask you on behalf of the whole church. Here's the first question. We went over these, uh, so you'll remember them. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? That's good. The second one is this. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. And this is the most important one. We talked about this one. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Elizabeth Tift Bowers, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Carolyn Elise Greiner, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Kara, Michelle, Hilberg, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jane Campbell Hinton, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cadence Lee Jackson, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Samuel Grady McGinn, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Marky Edmund Tripp Perry the Third, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. John Robinson Shenton, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sarah Catherine Steeple, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Holden, Wynn, Walton, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask all the compromands to stand. I have one more question uh, for you receiving you into membership here at uh, Park Avenue. 
As members of this congregation, Park Avenue United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say I will. And then for you, the congregation, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect in them love. Would you join me? We give thanks that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you, uh, wait, so stand up again, stand up again. Turn around and face everybody, would you? Would you welcome them with a round of applause? can be seated. Somebody has graciously given these flowers and they're absolutely beautiful this morning. They don't want us to know who they are, but they've given them uh, just because we have the freedom to worship and to grow spiritually here at Park Avenue. And what a blessing and a gift it is to, number one, be able to do, do com confirmation here today, but just to see so many faces. Jimmy's preaching to like, not just the choir today. So... <laughs> Um, if y'all will bow your heads, we are going to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful this morning for the blessings and the abundance that you have poured out over this church. Or this is all of these young people who have joined this church, their families that are here. Or this is not something that we could do apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we come this morning thanking you for your presence among us, for moving in their hearts, and for drawing them ever closer to you. God, we praise you uh, because where you are, there is life, Lord, there is energy, and there is excitement, and we thank you for that. But we ask that you would be with us today as a congregation, or that we would come with ears open, eyes ready to see, and hearts ready to be challenged, ready to be encouraged as we look deeper into what it means to be taught and to teach. God, we know that apart from you, we are nothing. Apart from you, we are lost in the sin that we come into this world with. Lord, by teaching, by learning, by growing, we draw ever closer to you through the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for that today. Each one of us at some point has been at the beginning of our journey and, and has encountered people that have taught us and led us and been faithful to you, Lord. And because of that, we have grown and we thank you for that. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be people who teach others, who want to see somebody come closer to you, who want to see somebody draw deeper into what it means to be a child of Christ. Because, Lord, it doesn't take long to look around and realize that our world is in desperate, desperate need of your peace and of your redemption and of the freedom to worship. Lord, we need you like we have never needed you before. And God, I feel like I say that every time I pray Lord, I feel like it's true every time I pray. We need you more and more and more and more. And so, God, I pray for us as a church. I pray for us as a congregation that we would recognize that we will never outgrow our need for you. We will never uh, grow fast enough, far enough that we will not need you. Lord, be with us today. Hear our voices as we draw them together and we pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught so long ago when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There's a slide that's going to come up and show you how you can continue to give to the church, but thank you so much for what you do, for what you give, for giving your heart, giving your time. These compromands are a great example of what we're building in this church through you and through your generous gifts. So thank you all so much. Uh, you can continue to do that as you look at this slide. Children, if you want to go to Children's Church, Miss Lynn or somebody like Miss Lynn will meet you right outside this door. Today's promise uh, from Jesus, it's, it is the empowering promise that he made to the disciples. Would you stand as we read about that promise? It's from John chapter 14, just one verse, verse 26. Let's share it together if we would. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. 
So last night, as our confirmands were wrapping up their time together, I, I was uh, honored to, to speak to them, and I shared with them a, a story, a true story of something that happened to uh, Debbie and me as we were driving on I-85 uh, I uh, going uh, snow skiing one, one year, uh, many moons ago, and uh, something terrible happened to us. Tell me, would y'all remember, tell me what happened to us, what happened? The gas pedal got stuck. That's exactly right. The gas pedal got stuck. As I began to pass a vehicle on the interstate and accelerated to do that and then took my foot off of the gas, guess what happened? It kept going. And, and uh, so I, I used that story. Obviously, we survived. I used that story last night to, uh, to, to share a message. Uh, the key thought in the message was keep, keep your what? Foot on the gas. Keep your foot on the gas. And, and so this, uh, this promise today is the way that Jesus Christ gave the disciples and us the ability to keep our foot on the gas when it comes to our faith. He promised them that he would give them the Holy Spirit. He's going away, but he's not leaving the disciples without help. In the past, they had been depending on him, and in his presence, he did amazing things for them and with them and through them. But now he's going away. But he says, I'm going to send you the advocate, the Holy Spirit. It's an incredible promise. It's the same promise for us today. And like the other promises, it has a premise. Here's the premise. We have to be in Christ. We have to be in me, as we learned last week, as Christ spoke those words. And then we've also got to be teachable. We have to be teachable. It's an amazing promise once we understand it. The Holy Spirit comes and fills us and guides us and leads us. You know, this word uh, advocate that's in the scripture we read, in the Greek, it's, it's the parakletos. And, and here's what it means, that, that term advocate. It, it, it's a legal term in many ways, and here's, it, here's what it means. One who is called alongside to help. It, it's an active helper that God gives to us when we are in Christ. The idea of an encourager, sort of like a legal counsel, someone close by your side to help you make wise decisions, to help you do the right thing, to give you the power to overcome the things in our lives that we need to overcome. That is an incredible promise. You know, one of the questions that I often get, or you might hear when people talk about the Holy Spirit, the question is, well, when do we get that? When do we receive the Holy Spirit? When can I have what I read about in the Bible when the Holy Spirit comes? Well, the answer is found in Ephesians. It's in the Bible and other places, but one place in particular, Ephesians chapter 1, here's the answer. In verse 13, it says this, When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, in him being Christ, with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So, so that when we are giving our life to Christ, when we make that decision and say, Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life, I commit my life to you, the Holy Spirit comes into us then. Verse 14 says, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance with the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. I really like that idea. It says that you were marked with a seal. And if you know anything about the times that Jesus uh, and Paul were, were living in when they were here, you know that marking with a seal was significant. In, in those days, it denoted authority and ownership and security. If you had the seal of the emperor or the seal of the king, but, but we have the seal of God in the Holy Spirit on each of us, marked as God's very own, living under his authority benefiting from his security and protection that he offers to us. This is the way, this is when God moves in. He moves into our lives and begins to reshape us and make us more like Christ. But in order to receive this promise, to claim this promise in my life, there are a couple of things I need to do. The first one is this. I, I must be teachable. I've got to be teachable. Um, are you willing to listen to be reminded, 
Or, or, or are you, do you know some people who just already know it all? Don't, don't look around. I mean, do you know somebody who just thinks, I already know everything, I don't need to be taught anything else? You know, I, I like what someone said some time ago. They said, I know enough to know that I don't know enough. And it's true in my life. I'm still learning. I was telling the compromise last night. I'm still growing. I'm still becoming more of what God hopefully is trying to make me to be. So I've got to be teachable. You remember the parable of the souls that Jesus talked about and the seed scattered by the farmer on the soil and it depends on the type of soil that it lands on, whether it will grow and produce or not. Uh, that, that parable uh, is one where Jesus calls out the listeners and he says this, whoever has ears, let them hear. Let them hear. He, he says uh, in Matthew 13, 15, for the, this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. Are we teachable? The premise says if we have ears to hear and eyes to see, then we must want what he wants to teach us. So are we teachable? Are we willing to listen? There, there are so many who miss out on the power of this promise simply because they're just not willing to do that, to be taught. So that's the first thing that I have to do. But the second thing is this. I, I must be willing not only to hear, not only to listen, I, I need to listen in the sense that I will follow the counsel of the Holy Spirit. I need to be willing to do that. You know, there are, there are plenty of studies that reveal that, that a bunch of folks just will not listen to the advice of their doctors or their lawyers or their counselors or their pastors or their parents or their teachers or even their good friend. They just don't listen to them. I mean, have you ever thought or heard someone say something like this? If only they had listened to me. If only they, they would have avoided all of this heartache and all of this trouble. And it would have never happened because when I was trying to help them, I gave them good advice. And you wonder, well, why wouldn't they listen? Why wouldn't they listen? For the same reason that sometimes we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit nudges us and says, this is what you ought to do. This is what would make this situation right. This is the way to handle this. This is the way to speak to your child or your spouse or your coworker. And sometimes we don't listen. And we go our way. And we end up hurting someone. Or maybe hurting ourselves. You know, we must listen to the Holy Spirit. And here's why. Because he's our advocate. And what he teaches us and tells us is for our good every single time. Every time. It's for our good. As he reveals to us what we need to know, as he gives us wisdom and, and fills us with power. And so I, I wonder, I mean, why, why do so many people underestimate the value of this promise? This is one of the best promises God ever made through Jesus Christ that we would receive the Holy Spirit. In fact, it is the gas that drove the disciples to spread the gospel in the face of tremendous persecution. The Bible tells us that we have the ability to resist the counsel of the Holy Spirit. We can actually say no to the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 7, Stephen, you remember the first martyr who was about to be stoned? And he says this in Acts chapter 7, he says, How stubborn are you talking to the Pharisees and the religious leaders who, who were about to put him to death? He went on to say, How heathen your hearts, how deaf you are to God's message. You are just like your ancestors. You too have resisted the Holy Spirit. And so in the Old Testament, the Israelites resisted the Holy Spirit. That was part of the problem because they wouldn't accept God's plan for them nor would they receive his correction when he would speak to them through the prophets. They resisted the Holy Spirit even then. And in the New Testament, these Jewish leaders that were here about to stone Stephen and others who were after Jesus and the disciples, they resisted the Holy Spirit in their opposition to him. And we too can resist the Holy Spirit. 
But if we're teachable and if we're willing to listen, here's what it looks like. It means receiving the teaching of the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as submitting our lives to him one day at a time and making time to listen to him and study the word with him. Here's a beautiful passage in Psalm 143. I love it, and I want you to just to maybe think about this. Look what it says. It says, this is the psalmist calling out to God. It said, let, let me hear your loving kindness in the morning. It's like you wake up in the morning, and what we receive as we begin to take our first breath is this understanding of the loving kindness of God, and it just washes over us, and it falls upon us. Let me hear your loving kindness in the morning. For I trust in you, the psalmist says. And then look at the openness of the psalmist. This is who we are to be. Teach me. Teach me the way I should go. For I lift my soul to you. I mean, it's a beautiful way to understand how to live in the, the, the wisdom and counsel of the Holy Spirit. You know, the second question I, I get to is this one. It says when it comes to the Holy Spirit is, is, well, then how do I know that voice that I'm hearing is the Holy Spirit? How do I know that? If he's teaching me, how can I recognize his voice? And so here, here are a couple of thoughts. Spirit-led teachings are recognizable when he is teaching us and speaking to us and we're listening. They're recognizable because, number one, here's the first thing they do. They're going to reinforce what Jesus taught always. They're going to reinforce and explain and help us understand better what Jesus was saying. In John 14, the passage we read together today, the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything I have said. That's what Jesus said. So they reinforce his teaching. But here's the second thing we can count on. They're always grounded in and line up with the Bible, the teaching, the scripture. You know, John 16 uh, a couple of chapters over from where Jesus was speaking, he's still speaking in the upper room, and he says this in verse 13. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, this advocate, this Holy Spirit that he'd been promising, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth, all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. And, and so he speaks the truth. He's called the spirit of truth. And Psalm 119 tells us this, the first thing to know about your word, the Bible, is that it is truth. So when he speaks, it's going to be truth, that he's going to speak to us. Sometimes we don't like to hear that. But he speaks it to us in love because it's for our good. The third thing is this, that the, the teaching the, that, that he's going to give us will promote righteousness and it convicts us of our sin. There's another part we don't like. I don't like to hear the Holy Spirit say, Jimmy, you really messed that up. You really did. But here's the beauty, Jimmy. I can help you make it right. And here's how. John 16, Jesus again speaking says, But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, look what it says, he will convict the world of its sin. That's a good thing. I, I need to know when I've messed up sometimes. Sometimes I don't even know it. Didn't even realize it. I'm oblivious to it. But the Holy Spirit says, that, that was not right, Jimmy. You shouldn't have done it that way. And of God's, it also reminds us of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And then here's the next, next thing is, the, the teaching will always bring, it'll bring glory to Jesus. It's going to lift Jesus up somehow. You know the word, somebody told me glory actually means this. It means to make God famous. That's what the word, you can think of it that way, to mean whenever you say I'm speaking of God's glory, I want to make God famous. Whatever it is, the universe, whatever it is, makes him famous. And it's going to bring glory to him. It says uh, in John 16, 14, it says the Holy Spirit will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. And then here's the last one. His teaching is going to point us in the right direction every single time. Psalm 143 says, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your spirit lead me on a straight path. He's going to show us that. What should I do here, Lord? Well, the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit will lead you. This is the path you should take. 
walk in it this way. And so the, the disciples must have been confused when they heard Jesus say this. And, and he says, well, it's good that I'm going away because when I go away, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. It's good that I go away. And, and here's why. Because he knew that there were going to be times in our lives when we would take our feet off the gas, our foot off the gas, and we would find ourselves in a place that doesn't please him. But with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, the advocate who helps us, we're able to keep our foot on the gas. What a gift, what a promise. So what do you need the Holy Spirit to teach you in this season, in this place where you are now, Jimmy, all of us, what is it the Holy Spirit needs to teach us? If we're open to that question and willing to listen and act on it, then we're gonna experience the power of this promise given to us by Jesus Christ, which builds the hope that we have in this life. So Father, thank you. Um, thank you for your, your promise of this beautiful gift of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, Lord, we, we don't really understand it. And, and sometimes, even though we hear him speak to us, we choose not to listen and obey. But we want to, Lord. And so help us today and the next day and the next day to rely upon your Holy Spirit to be our advocate, to walk beside us, to be our active helper in all that we do. What a gift. What a promise. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. children tell their children let this be their memory that all my treasure was in heaven and you were everything to me His faithful hand has held me all this way. And when I'm old and gray and all my days are numbered on the earth, let it be known in you alone my joy.
His faithful hand has held me all this way. And when I'm old and gray, and all my days are numbered on the earth, let it be known in you alone. My joy was absolutely true, isn't it? You'll never find anybody who loves you like Jesus. And he does. And so uh, that's, that's our hope. That's where our hope is. Not only does he love us, he makes the way for us to love him and love others. And that's the gift of him in our lives. Would you stand to receive this benediction? Uh, Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for helping us understand nobody will ever love us like you do. Thank you for giving us the faith that we can believe and trust in you. And so send us out now that we might share that with others. Keep the faith, stay safe, and know for sure that God's got this. Go in his peace and in his love. Amen. Amen.